<sighs> oh, I forgot the camera was recording, of course. Well, might as well start my intro here. Anyway, hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Alex. Welcome back to the Brave Lionheart channel. More specifically, welcome back to the Lionheart review corner. Uh, yeah, I know my last video I did a review, but considering how fast uh, August is coming up and, you know, I figured... You know, be old enough to actually talk about this movie now and all that. And you're actually probably wondering why I'm a bit upset about today's review. Um, if you couldn't guess, um, you probably couldn't guess from what I said at the end of my last review, which was on Space Jam A New Legacy. And if you could already guess from the title, yes. Yes, it's finally time, people. It's finally time we talk about a Marvel film that has actually had some problems in the past. Problems mostly getting released. Oh yeah, if you didn't notice, I'm actually wearing my uh, Among Us t-shirt that I got from uh, Cherokee, Tennessee. And you probably thought, oh, is he going to talk about an Among Us movie that's coming out? Sadly, no, there is no Among Us movie coming out. Which, of course, there would be no reason to make a movie based on that game. There's not much to talk about. Uh... But anyway, yes, if you couldn't tell from the title of today's video, we're actually talking about Marvel's Black Widow. And boy, do I have a lot of things to say about this movie. Yep, it's time we take a look at Marvel's most delayed film of the year. No kidding, if you watch the updates from last year of how many times this, f this movie got delayed, you'd be surprised. Now, originally, Black Widow was supposed to be released on May of 2020. But, of course, due to the COVID pandemic and, you know, a lot of the Sony backlashing their movies and Marvel kind of doing the same, this movie pretty much got pushed to next year. And during the start of next year, it was rumored that it was possibly going to get pushed back to next year. But Marvel pursued and ended up making this movie not only for theaters, but for Disney Plus as well. There's also a whole controversy going on there nowadays, but that's for another time. <sighs> Alright, sorry, I had to get really comfortable in this because it's it's not a very uh, fun chair to sit into, but it helps get reviews out quicker. Let me scoot up just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you know it's really funny actually before I start this review? Interestingly in fact, I ended up watching a teaser trailer for this movie that came out, and it surprisingly showed that, um... This movie was going to be the Black Widow origin story that we were going to get. It wasn't that. It, it really was not that. And I'll be talking about that in my final thoughts. But a little... You know what? I'm just not going to waste any time. Let's just jump right into the review because I was not too excited to talk about this movie, but I'm going to have to. And again... I respect everyone's opinions in the comments who think differently who thought this movie was good. I respect your opinions on that. These are just my opinions on what I thought of this movie when I went to see this with my dad. So, anyway, let's go ahead and take a trip to Russia. Go ahead and meet the Romanov, or not Romanov, but Natasha's family in this movie. We'll talk about that in a second. And... Let's dive right into Marvel's Black Widow. Now, interesting, sorry, interestingly enough, this movie kind of starts off with a sort of Black Widow backstory, kind of. Sort of. It, it's not very long and it's kind of quick. So, anyway, we start off with Natasha's background as a young girl who had blue teal hair as a little girl. That's something I never understood when I watched it, why she had that kind of hair. I'm guessing maybe because she was hiding from someone, so that's why she painted it blue, or maybe her mother or father painted it blue. Uh, something like that. Uh, but you could still see, like, little streaks of her uh, reddish-orange hair in the movie. I don't know, for some reason when I looked at posters of this movie, it, they made her hair look orange, not, like, red in most of the other movies. I don't know, I guess, like, because she's getting older, her hair color is kind of almost dying out. Which, it still looks like a good hair color, honestly. It's a nice little mix of colors. Anyway, moving on from that, we're also introduced to her younger sister, Yelena. 
Though, the way it's pronounced in the movie, it sounds like Elena, or just Elena, but it's Yelena. That's gonna be a hard name to pronounce. And they're just enjoying their time at a small, isolated park in the woods that also hosts a Firefly show. A CGI Firefly show. I know for a fact, like, when you're trying to get, like, you know, impressive shots that you can't really do with practical effects, uh, you have to resort to CGI, but do you really have to CGI Fireflies? There really is no point for that. Uh, anyway, moving on. We're then introduced to the girls' mother, Mel Melanie, or... Uh, yeah, it's Melanie. And they have to go back home as their father is making their way home. And their father happens to be the father of the year from Stranger Things, David Harbour. Yeah, I had to look up his name. I hope I got that right. But you might also know him as as Sheriff Harp Hopper. Sorry, I almost mi mixed the two names together. Sheriff Hopper from Stranger Things. Which, by the way, if anyone's excited for season four of that show, I'm, I'm proud of you because I'm super excited for that show to come back. Anyway, moving on. Their father's character's name in this is Alexi. Which, it took me a while to notice... I feel like that's a reference to the character Alexi from Season 3. And sadly, we all know what happened to him at the end of Season 3. May he rest in peace. Moving on. So, he's making his way home as they're enjoying their dinner. Or their small dinner, I assume. Then, something happens and they have to leave. And actually have to make their way to an airfield to get inside a giant, giant plane. And just who exactly are they escaping from? S.H.I.E.L.D. of all people. Now that feels kind of awkward. But I guess it makes sense since they're like a family of like, you know, Russian spies and like assassins. I'm, assure, I'm sure that they did something to make S.H.I.E.L.D. mad, so that's why they're chasing after them. And I'll admit, it's a pretty decent action scene. But of course, letting you know that Mar it's Marvel movies, they're always going to have really good decent action scenes. Just saying. But anyway, yeah, it's a decent action scene. The family gets away, and they end up at another airport thing where we meet the villain of our movie, Drakoff. I don't remember what they said his first name. Maybe his first name is Drakoff, but we're just going to call him that. And uh, you might be surprised as um, this is a character that's not really mentioned that much in the Marvel Universe. I'll talk about that at the final bit of the movie, you know, when I give my final thoughts for this. But, uh, so yeah, moving on from that, Alexi basically took the girls, uh, well, the Drakeoff and his men took the girls away from him so that they could be part of the Black Widow program that Drakeoff is using. You know, nowadays, Marvel is just making a bunch of programs for their universe. You have the Super Soldier program, or more specifically, the Super Soldier Serum for that program, the Winter Soldier program, and now, the Black Widow program. Jeez, what are they going to think of next? The Black Panther program? Or the Wakanda program? Although I think the people of Wakanda would love that. To pay tribute uh, to their fallen king. If you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, so, moving on from that, we cut to in... Well, we cut into a very, very short montage of Natasha and her sister going through the program and learning all the skills they need to become assassins and black widows. And, honestly, that's probably one of my problems with this movie, that you had the setup for an origin story for the entire movie, but it's kind of a waste of potential with a very quick montage of... What well, we could have seen some interesting stuff with how Natasha learned how to fight and use weapons and stuff like that. That would have been interesting, but no, you didn't. You decided to skip all that and sh not show it. Anyway, we cut to, I would say it probably was 15 years later. I, it's been a bit since I've watched the movie, but we're just going to say it's 15 years later. And this is where the true plot for the movie picks up. Let me just say this. This is a movie that takes place after Captain America's Civil War.
let's let's just move on because I'm, I'm going to talk about that at the end of the review. Just saying. And uh, yeah, Natasha's still being chased by the government and Sergeant Trask or Agent Trask, whatever his name was from Captain America's Civil War. You guys will probably let me know in the comment section down below if I get names wrong or if I don't remember character names. Something like that. But her escaping shield is not that important because we had to cut to another country with her sister Elena, now old, I would say pretty much as the same age as uh, Natasha in this movie. Anyway, her and a couple of other Black Widow girls, we could just, we could just say that, they're Black Widow girls, something like that. They're chasing an informant that has something that's very top secret that they need to get back for Dracoff, of course, in the Red Room, which is kind of also explained in the movie a little bit. And, yeah, things don't go well for Elena. The informant basically sprays her with some kind of CGI red mist that immediately has Elena get her memory back. Yeah, there's something in the Black Widow program that, like, brainwashes the girls and, like, erases their memory of, like, who they were before they entered the program. It's, it's explained a lot quicker, mostly. And also the informant tells her to basically release all the other girls from the system. So yeah, Elena's got to deal with that, while Natasha's pretty much just gone off the grid from the United States, so she decides to go to Norway and meet her friend who's in a trailer park, and he's a character I think he was mentioned in one of the movies. I don't remember which Marvel movie he was mentioned in. Again, I might be wrong on that. And he's basically been helping her with stuff. So, he leaves her in the comfort of the trailer while she has to go out and basically get more gas for the... Uh, yeah, by the way, the, the trailer is powered by gas. That actually must really suck for people in Norway to have to buy gas from the store every time their generator runs out of fuel. You know, I, I feel bad for people who have to deal with that in Norway. Unless I might be wrong, and that's not, like, an actual thing that happens. Then I apologize to anyone who's from Norway watching this right now. Anyway, moving on. While she's going to get gas, she's also attacked by the other villain of this movie, Taskmaster. Now, letting you all know who Taskmaster is, he is basically a character that is... Uh, Black Widow's arch rival for this for the Marvel franchise. I don't. I didn't really read up much on the rivalry between him and Black Widow, and you guys can probably help me with that in the comment section below. But what I do know is he's a character that studied all the moves of every single Avenger. Yeah, so he's pretty much a force to be reckoned with. In this movie, not so much. Not so much. Though, we do get a cool little fight scene between him and Black Widow, and that's all we get. No, like, dialogue or anything to, like, you know, set up their rivalry or anything for the Marvel comics. Just a quick fight scene with another baddie that never says anything in this entire movie. Except towards the end, but yeah, you all know how that works. So, after all that wild and crazy action we got from Black Widow, she decides to leave her home, well, her home away from home, I guess, in Norway, to go to Budapest. Yeah, there's also this whole joke with her and her friend of how it's supposed to be pronounced. There's, like, Budapest or Budapest. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think, which one sounds like the right term or saying for Budapest. Or Budapest, however it's pronounced. Again, I might be wrong with that. So yeah, she goes there and runs into her sister Elena. They have a quick little fight scene just to get to see each other again. And they basically talk about the whole thing that's been leading up to them meeting each other again after many years of not seeing each other in the Black Widow program. Which, again, really should have been explained instead of used in a quick little montage. Huh? Anyway, so, they're just enjoying their time together, and who should show up to attack them? Taskmaster again! Not saying a single word, but firing his 
plasma arrow thing. I don't know what it is. It's just a bow and arrow that has explosives on it. I should also mention he has a uh, half metal, half plasma sword in this movie. And it's not even made of half plasma. It's just a sword with paint, with freaking orange paint on it. Hollywood, man. They know, they know what to do with comic book adaptations. But anyway, moving on from that. So they have a little uh, car chase scene going on, and uh, it doesn't go too well for them. So Elena and Natasha, basically, they stop at a small little village to talk about stuff, and it's honestly a pretty nice scene in this movie. You know, nice little character development for these two, even though we, again, we could have gotten it in the montage in the supposed origin part of the opening of this movie. But I guess not. Let me just clean my glasses here for a second. So yeah, they end up talking with each other for a bit, and Yelena talks about the Red Room, where most of their sisters have been taken and brainwashed and turned into Black Widow soldier soldiers. I don't know why that was a hard word to say. Moving on from that, they basically... Natasha knows who can actually get them into the Red Room. Or can possibly try to get them into the Red Room. Q Sheriff Hopper! Yeah, remember he was a thing in this movie? Well, it turns out he's in some kind of prison telling a fake story about him fighting Captain America as his Russian superhero persona, the Red Guardian. And there actually is kind of a funny scene you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna point this out already. I'm probably gonna say it again at the end of this movie or at the end of this review. Sorry, I messed that up. David Harper in this movie is funny, or David Harbor. Again, those names so sound so familiar, like similar. But yeah, he is he is hilarious as Alexi in this movie. Like any moment he is on screen, he is just chewing up the scenery, and it's so fun to watch. It's hilarious. Because there's a moment he's talking about his story. He comes up against this big guy. He talks about, you know, like how he messed up, how Captain America was still frozen by the time he said in his story he was fighting him. So, uh, yeah, and Alexi's just like, You calling me a liar? And he breaks his hand and he's just like, Oh, look at the little baby weep. Something like that. So, yeah, he goes to the ma to the mail room and something, and the guards mock him for being in here and not being able to break out. And then he gets a little uh, Bluetooth earpiece thing from Natasha and Yelena telling him they're going to break him out of prison. And it leads into another really great action scene in this movie inside of, like, ice prison, or not an ice prison, but a snow-filled prison with a bunch of, like, prisoners attacking the guards and Alexi trying to break out. Also, there was a rocket launcher that happened, and it caused an avalanche, so they basically could escape. And that's basically where you get that. So yeah, they have a little uh, spat, and Natasha basically asks Alexi if he knows where the Red Room is. Sadly, he doesn't, but he knows someone that might possibly know where it is. Thus, we cue into their fake mother! Yeah, I probably should let let you know this. Natasha figured this out a long time ago. Again, should have been mentioned earlier in the beginning. She figured out all along that the family she was with was a fake family that they were living. And it also happened in the Black Widow program. They had like a fake Christmas, fake vacation spot and all that and yada yada yada. All that kind of thing. So we're also introduced to uh, their fake mother Melina again. Sorry, I should say we meet their mother again. I don't know why I said introduced again. Who basically runs a pig farm where she's training pigs to act like pets. Oh no, they are pets. They just treat trains them to act like dogs. She also does a neat little play dead trick with a CGI pig that basically almost dies. Yeah, that would have been the saddest thing to see in this movie. Really sad. So yeah, they have their whole like little family spat, and Elena talks about how she remembered all the good times, even if it was fake. She basically remembers all the good times that they had together as a fake family. 
Yeah, and they also have a moment where they're singing a song that she loved to sing uh, in the car at the beginning of the movie. I don't remember the name of the song, but it's a really good classic song. You guys can help me with that in the comment section down below. What was the name of the song that they were playing in the car and that Alexi was singing to Elena when they're older? Something like that. But things go, don't go too well for our heroes because their mother basically lied to them and set them up to Dracov to get captured and sent to the Red Room. Which, uh, you want to know something about the Red Room? I'll tell you. You want to know something about the Red Room? Yeah, I'll tell, I'll tell you. It's a spaceship in the freaking sky! And yeah, I know, that's, that's a common thing in the Marvel Universe, spaceships and all that, but how the frick did this guy get a spaceship and put it in the sky? What, did he just steal it from one of Thanos's like, thousands of ships that he has? Or did he steal it from the scroll from Captain Marvel? Yeah, I'll tell you what, he probably found a way to steal it from them under their nose without them noticing. Something like that. So yeah, our heroes are captured because their mother lied to them and captured them. Yeah, you, you'll understand in a second. And apparently, Black Widow was put in a- or Natasha was put in a cell with her father, and Melanie goes into the office of Dracov, which I probably should have mentioned about this character. He has the creepy old man vibe. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. He has the creepy old man vibe that no one wanted to see. No one at all. And it's terrifying in this movie. Just any scene that he's in where he's got that creeper old man vibe is just... Ugh. And it's the same with uh, Melanie in this movie, who surprisingly turns out to be Black Widow. Yeah, they did a whole, like, switch-up change thing before they ended up getting captured. It was, it was Natasha's plan and all that, and blah, 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 something like that. And yeah. Oh, speaking of twists, you want to know who Taskmaster was the whole time? Dracoff's dead daughter that Black Widow accidentally killed. Yeah, I know to some people who probably have not seen the movie, I also should have mentioned this was going to be a spoiler review for anyone who has not seen the movie. Yeah, sorry about that spoiler. It's Dracoff's dead daughter. That would be confusing to you, but again, I will try to explain it the best I can in uh, the final thoughts of the, or the final part of the review. You know, something like that. Moving on! So yeah, we get our epic showdown where Elena escapes being completely lobotomized and turned back into a Black Widow soldier. And basically their whole plan is to take the whole ship down with Dracov still in it while trying to get the Black Widow girls out of there. Yeah. And you're probably thinking, oh, we're definitely going to see Black Widow deck Dracov in the face for, what, for all the stuff he's done, right? Not exactly. What actually happens is, Black Widow cannot harm Dracoff. You want to know the reason? He l doused himself with a pheromone that the Black Widow girls also cannot hurt him or kill him. Okay, sure, why not? We'll write that in the script so that Black Widow can't have a showdown with him and we can see... Dracov beat the crap out of her just by kicking her while she's laughing about it. Though to be fair, Scarlett Johansson is still perfect in this movie. She does an excellent job with her nonchalant face the whole time. But it's not really till then. Again, we get another flashback to her to Melina, Melina, uh, Melina or Melanie. Sorry, explaining that the only way you can break off the connection of the pheromone is to break your nose. You know, movie, you really could have let us, the audience, figure that out for ourselves instead of just explaining it in a flashback. You did fine with it explaining their plan in the flashback, but you didn't have to explain that. We could have honestly figured that out for ourselves. So yeah, Dracoff is nearly beaten to a pulp, but he summons in his Black Widow goon squad to beat up Black, to beat up Natasha and all that. And it goes pretty bad until Elena breaks in with the rest of the uh, 
magical red CGI dust that basically breaks off the connection of the brainwash of the Black Widow girls, and now they're back to normal. And also we get a little uh, fight scene with, well, I say little fight scene with Alexi and Taskmaster, and it's, it's not the best fight scene. And honestly, Taskmaster is easily defeated in this movie after, you know, they blow up the entire ship with Dracoff and the rest of his forces on top of it. Everyone lands back on the ground safely. The family, they say their goodbyes while S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming. Yeah, that was still a thing in this movie. Glad they actually com almost completely forgot about that, by the way. And Natasha basically goes off after only a few months later. She changes her hair to the yellow hair that we know from Infinity War and Endgame. And she goes off in the jet to go off to do Infinity War for that movie. And thankfully, that is where this movie ends. Great. Anyway, there you go, guys. That was my review of Black Widow. And yeah, it was not good. But before I give my final thoughts, I want to mention what I meant when I said that no one's going to understand why Taskmaster is uh, Dreykov's daughter that was dead that Black Widow killed. This movie is supposedly based on a Black Widow comic called Black Widow Prelude. Yeah, not the best name for a Marvel comic, now is it? Where, again, they mention this also from the comic that Dracoff was killed, was supposedly killed, and the Red Room was destroyed by Black Widow and Hawkeye, you know, her supposed love interest in the movie, or in the other Marvel movies. Yeah. Not really a Black Widow origin story now, is it? Alright, so let's get the good stuff out of the way for this movie and then we'll get into the bad stuff. So honestly, the action's good. But again, it's a Marvel movie so you know they're going to have good action and of course good acting. I actually did like the cast for this movie. You know, Scarlett Johansson again does an amazing job as Black Widow and Nat aka Natasha. Again, like I said, David Harbour does an amazing job as the character Alexi. Some of the acting could have been better with some of the extra cast. Maybe Dracoff could have been done better. The mother character could have been done better also. Yeah, and also there was this whole story uh, about Natasha's real parents that Dracoff talked about. He said in kind of a joke that like he saw a tombstone and said uh, nameless or something. I, I don't know. It wasn't a good joke. And I think that's pretty much all I can say about the good stuff for this movie. Now the bad stuff. Considering the fact that we were promised a Black Widow origin story for this movie, and we did not get that, that is probably one of my biggest takeaways from this film. That you can't just really say that it's going to be an origin story and then completely be like, nope, we're going to have this movie take place right after Captain America's Civil War. Which, again, for the later Marvel projects was not a bad thing, but for a Black Widow movie? You're really gonna do that? That's one of the biggest takeaways, and my other biggest problem is Taskmaster himself. We get some decent action scenes with them, but literally nothing about his character except for the fact, oh, it's Dracoff's dead daughter from a comic that... I'm pretty sure people who are watching this right now and who are big Marvel fans probably have not read that comic. But if anyone who has watched this and has read that comic, thank you, because you honestly did something that I could not do. Find a comic that this movie was supposed to be based on, because I was hoping, again, this was going to be a Black Widow origin story, but it wasn't! <sighs> honestly, if they just kept the mask on Taskmaster... That would have been fine, because we wouldn't have known who he was. Again, still would have... <coughs> Sorry. Still would have been awesome to know who he was in terms of, like, the rival character for Black Widow and most of the other comics that they have been in. <sighs> anyway, so what do I give Marvel's Black Widow? Now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be fair with this. I'm still going to give it a bad score, but I'm going to be fair. 
I'm gonna give it a four out of ten. I'm gonna. That's the best kind of fare I could give this movie. Decent action, great acting, some pretty okay special effects. Again, with practical effects, with car flipping, that's interesting. But again, with us being lied to that this was supposed to be a Black Widow origin story, you know, I'm just going to say it. I've, I've been thinking this the whole time before I started talking about a review for this movie. That this movie feels like a sequel to a Black Widow origin story we were supposed to get. But we never did. I mean, I don't know. Maybe in the near future, Marvel will make a Black Widow origin story, or someone will at least make a fan film of an origin story. That would be decent to see. Even though technically in the first, like, Avengers film, we technically got a backstory to Natasha's, like, life before she became Black Widow. Sort of. Well, while she was becoming Black Widow. And you guys can... Hate me in the comments all you want for my honest opinions about how I felt about this movie. Again, I respect your opinions if some of you liked this movie. Uh, this is just my honest opinion of what I thought of Black Widow. And honestly, my dad agreed the same way. Funny story, he fell asleep halfway into the movie because he got so bored by some of the scenes. And honestly, I was about to fall asleep too. Yeah, usually it's by the time, by these final thoughts, I start ranting really hard or when I start making jokes in the middle of the review. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you thought of my review of this movie. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to click the notification bell to never miss a new video. Doing new content every once a week to try to get new stuff out of there. Anyway, I will see you awesome fans later. Bye-bye!